Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you know, if you follow the channel, I don't spend big money on ESCs for my sport fly and park fly planes because I just don't think it's necessary. In the case of the Smooth though, Dave pointed out that it has a function on there that I'd probably be interested in as I work on pattern flying and that's ESC braking. So a lot of the F3A flyers use some kind of braking profile on their ESC and the Castle Link Phoenix Edge light that I bought supports it. There are a couple of different ways to get into the ESC configuration on Castle ESCs. This Castle Link programmer is one of them. So I thought I'd take a look at the programmer itself and then walk you guys through the options. Now, before I get into the video, I'm going to be very clear about one thing. I am not a Castle ESC expert, so I can't take a lot of questions about what all these different things do because frankly, I'm still learning when it comes to Castle ESCs. But what I do want to do is show you the software and the programming tool and exactly what this thing is capable of because I'm going to be honest with you, when I open up the software, it kind of knocked my socks off. All right, so a quick look at the programming device. It's very small, as you can tell. These are my fingers. That's an SD adapter for a micro SD card. So you can see the size of this thing is very, very small. There are only three pins on it, ground, power, and signal and the connectivity is a micro USB. To connect it to your ESC, you just need to connect your signal, hot, and ground wire from the ESC directly to these three pins, just like you plug it into your receiver, and you plug the USB in on this side, and that's it. And then you fire up the Castle Link software, and away you go. To configure your Castle ESC with your computer, you need the hardware USB linker, which we just covered, and you also need the software. You can get it by searching Google for download Castle Link software, and it's the first link. When you click on that, you just click this little blue circle. Your computer will ask you if you want to keep it. You say yes, please keep it, and then you run the installer. So once you run that installer, hit yes, and it will do the work of installing Castle Link. I've already installed it, so that's why it's asking me to repair it. But it'll go ahead and install Castle Link on your computer. And then once that's done, you should have a Castle Link icon on your desktop. So I'll click on that. No other drivers required on Windows 10. It just worked. And you can see right away, I got USB connected and device linked. Those are two of the critical things. And you'll also notice that the icon in the middle changed to Phoenix Edge Lite. You see this little picture in the middle? I didn't do that. That was the software picking up what type of ESC we're working with. Okay, there's a couple of different things on the main screen. One is there's an update button down here. So once you've made changes to your configuration, you can press update. It'll send those changes to the ESC. And then this one says defaults. If you press this, it will reset all of your settings to the factory defaults. So let's just take a look at what's available in the tabs up top. The first tab says throttle. And before I get into the options, I want to point out these little blue circles. If you hit those, Castle's done a pretty good job of providing some help. So when you click on a configuration help button, it will tell you what the thing is for and it'll give you some information about the options. So I'm not going to read through these. You'll have to do that on your own, but take a look at them if you're not sure about what you should be setting your model for. In my case, it's an airplane. Under throttle type, I tried fixed endpoints and I got to be honest with you, I'm not sure that I really like the way they do that and I really don't like the way they do the auto calibrate either because based on my reading, what this means is in order to calibrate your ESC, you have to do it on every flight, which I'm okay with that. My problem is with the way they want you to do it. They want you to do it by running your throttle all the way up to full power for two to four seconds. And what I don't like about that, there are two things. One, what indication do I have from the ESC that it actually registered the high point? That's one issue. And number two, what if I have a very powerful airplane and I, I'm by myself and I really don't want to run it up to full speed by myself? I just, I kind of wish that they would do the auto calibration the way other ESCs do. And that's that it's disarmed when you plug it in, you run the throttle all the way up to the top, you get a beep beep, you run it all the way down to the bottom, you get a beep beep and the plane's ready to fly. Um, that's a normal calibration for most planes, but I have some ESCs where you have to do that on every single flight. And I don't mind that, but it doesn't run my motor. That's the difference. The fixed endpoints requires movement on the throttle trim or the throttle endpoints up and down. 
in order for me to get this to work, I had to change my output on my TX16 radio to be something like negative 40 on the low end. And I just don't like that because in my opinion, that takes resolution away from the throttle. And, and so for that reason, I don't like the endpoint suggestion either. So I'm gonna go back to auto calibrate and I'll be using that. Throttle response, again, read the help. There's a couple of different options in here. They just say slow, medium, and fast. I think for an airplane, I think I probably want high. So I'm gonna stick with that. If you're using an external governor, which is a connection option on the ESC, you can, you'll see external governor for the vehicle type and you'll get access to these configuration options. The next one is the brake and you can see I've already got mine configured. The brake strength is 30%, no delay and fast ramp. This area is why I bought the ESC because I wanted some control over braking. Okay, for cutoffs, you get an option to set your cutoff voltage and for me, I'm going to leave mine on auto because I think the ESC will be smart enough to know when I plug in what kind of a voltage I have and then what the cutoff voltage per cell is. I'm going to leave mine at 3.4. I don't remember what the default is, but I think 3.4, if I get to that point, I want to land the plane. Voltage cutoff type, RPM reduction. There are a couple of other options like hard. I'd recommend against that. Let's see what soft cutoff does. Soft cutoff says when the pack reaches the cutoff voltage, power to the motor is reduced until the pack voltage rises above the cutoff voltage. Power is then continually modulated to maintain the cutoff voltage. So yeah, not sure I like that. I think I'm gonna stick with uh, the RPM reduction cutoff. And in that model, uh, mine says the RPM will abruptly reduce power to motor by about 25%. I'll pick that up. So that's what I, I wanna stick with. But you know, hey, whatever floats your boat. There's some current limiting options and the cutoff types. You can do a soft cutoff or a hard cutoff. I prefer soft cutoff. For motor start power, I'm leaving the defaults because honestly, until I have a reason to change the default, I'm just not going to. Motor timing, I've read a couple of different articles on this. The biggest issue that I've seen is that some people put it on high and they've had smoke come out of their motors. So I have already flown it this way. I'm just gonna leave it this way. You have an option of reversing the thrust direction of the ESC, so you can change that here. And then the PWM rate, again, I've flown mine at 12 kilohertz. I may not be making all the power, but it's making decent power. After doing the reading though, I think I'm gonna go ahead and switch mine to outrunner mode because they say this is what you should use. If I click the help, it says, this setting changes the frequency with which the controller sends power pulses to the motor. If you decide to experiment to change PWM, use a watt meter and attack, and that's it. It says nothing in the help about outrunner mode. However, I have read on the forums that if you're using an outrunner motor, you should put it in outrunner mode. So that's what I'll do. And then under other, hey Dave, this is for you buddy. Remember I told you I was complaining about that power on beep. There's an option in here that if the ESC is powered on and the motor's in neutral, the ESC beeps every 20 seconds to alert you if you've left your plane plugged in. That thing was driving me nuts. There's an option in here to turn that off. So I've done that. Live link is a way for the controller to communicate power system information to an external device such as a radio, RV, or computer using a USB interface in real time. Yeah, okay, I don't have that. Uh, BEC voltage, this is kind of nice because you know how I did the dual power supply option if you want to get a little extra torque out of your servos, you can bump the BEC voltage up, which is very cool. And you can use it to match your external BEC so that you can run your ESC BEC and your external BEC in parallel. And check out my redundant power supply video for a little more information on that. Well, it just so happens that I'm using a Castle ESC as well. So what I'll be doing is plugging this device into my Castle ESC and setting my voltage to six. That gives a little more torque on the servos. And again, I'll be able to match up my ESC's output to my external BEC's output. And then auxiliary wire, there's some really cool things you can do with this. One of them is reverse. And you, so you can plug this into your receiver and throw a signal and it'll reverse your ESC, which is very cool if you've got a plane that would benefit from something like that. And there's a handful of other options. Read the help file to learn what they are. I'm not gonna go through every one of them, but that's what the auxiliary wire is for. And that's a white wire on the ESC. Now here's one of the coolest things that I've seen. 
And I want to show this to you by clicking on download log data. While we download the data that's on the ESC already, notice that you can choose what items are logged. You can log your voltage, ripple, current, controller temperature. That's a big one for me in Florida. Your input throttle, your motor power output, motor RPM, which is kind of cool, your governor gain, and your BEC voltage. Very cool stuff. And you can also set options to reset the data based on the concept of a rollover. So once you've filled up the log, you can have it automatically delete earlier entries and keep con continue to write log data. So check this out. To me, this is one of the flat out, hands down, coolest things available on the ESC, and that's log data. Okay, just to make this chart a little bit easier to read, I'm gonna click view, session, and I'm gonna choose the session because every flight that I've had on this plane, that data is logged. I'm gonna pull up, I don't know, session, let's try session 15. And you can see on session 15 what the voltage is into the ESC. And obviously it's a five cell battery because we're starting at about 21 volts. So min, max, average, we started at 21 and we wound up at 18.3. And you can see the voltage graph on this plane as the plane flew. How cool is that? This shows about a 10, maybe 11 minute log. Now, in addition to voltage, you can down here on the bottom, you can click on these little buttons and they'll turn on other logged entries. So you can see my current minimum was zero, my average was 17, not bad, and my max was 67. So it looks like my max might have been right there, right around takeoff, probably. And then, I don't know, maybe that was a touch and go. But you can see the application and rise and fall of current as the flight progressed. Very cool stuff. Watts, how cool is this? You can actually get your wattage data off your ESC. Very, very cool feature. So average 335 watts. My max power was 1322, and that would have occurred right on takeoff, probably. That's what that is. Temperature, again, being in Florida, this is important for me to know. 159 was the max, 139 on average. I'm going to need to do a little reading and find out <laughs> where this thing is safe to operate. But yeah, that thing got hot. 159, that's hot. RPM, check this out. The ESC knows how fast the motor's spinning, so it's saying 42,000 RPM. I don't believe that. I don't think that that's the case. This is a, just to check the work, this is a 20 volt battery and it is a 420 kV motor, so 84, yeah, I don't buy that. I don't buy that RPM. There's a configuration issue wrong in there somewhere. Throttle in. Max is two milliseconds. That would have been here. That's the max value on throttle. And then and then on the low, obviously, it's down here at zero. Power out. I'm not sure what the power out represents. I'll have to do a little reading on that. But anyway, and then back voltage. That's cool, too. You can see that the BEC had, an, had a solid 5.1 volts out, although my BEC is not connected on this plane right now because I haven't implemented the redundant backup strategy. I still have to do that on the smooth. All right, so that's the Castle Creations log data. I really wanted to show that to you guys because while I flat out disagree with the idea of having this on every single plane, I think having it on higher performance planes or more expensive planes, there could be some real value in here. Also, you might be able to buy some of these ESCs in lower amp ratings and use them to set up your planes. And then once you've got them set up and working the way you want, you can switch over to a cheaper ESC like a ZTW or a Hobby Wing or something like that. So anyway, there's the log data out of the castle. I thought it was very cool. I hope you found that bit useful. Okay, the last tab is software, and this is a really nice little arrangement because what it shows you is what the available versions are, what version you've got, what the device and hardware number are, and what the revisions and change history are in the software. So I think it's very, very, I got to hand it to them. That's a very clean and easily understandable arrangement. So I'm impressed with that, actually. And then here's one other thing that I really kind of think is cool is that you can print your settings, and I can call this the smooth. And when you look at this, it'll let you, let's print this to a PDF. Once you print that to a PDF, you can use this to share it with people who might be helping you troubleshoot. You could 
put it inside the plane somewhere. Uh, you, you could take a picture of it and put it on your phone so you know what your ESC settings are. Again, I really have to hand it to Castle on this one. You know, they do absolutely charge a premium for their ESCs, but you know, they're, they're doing some value added things that make me say, okay, they're at least trying to earn it. So I gotta give them props for that because this is actually a very cool function and I've never seen another ESC do this. I'm sure there are some that might, but as you know, I don't buy expensive ESCs. So this is kind of new to me and I think it's very cool. All right, after all of that, I made a couple little modifications. What I want to do now is, I don't know if you have to be on the main screen, probably not, but I'm going to hit an update and send my changes to my ESC. Update of settings complete. There we go. Okay, because you stuck around to the end of the video, you get some bonus footage. What I've done is connected my Castle Creations BEC to the USB linker to see what I can change in there. Notice that I've got a USB connected and a device linked. In order to get the green device linked indicator, I had to plug the BEC into the battery. I did not have to do that for the ESC, only the BEC. Let's take a look and see what we've got. Under basic output voltage, look at that. Look how granular that is. I'm gonna set it to six. That's what I set my ESC to. So here's the cool part. Now that I've got the output voltage on my Castle Creations BEC programmable, I can set it to the same output voltage that I have on my ESC, which means I can plug them both into my receiver and they'll both supply power and current. So in aggregate, I can deliver 15 amps of current to my setup if I need to, which is very cool. You still have to put the diodes in place though. Keep that in mind. You can't. The reason you have to put them in, in place is because if one of them gets higher or lower voltage, the one with higher voltage is going to try and feed the one with lower voltage. So those diodes are still critical. The cool thing about having them set to the same voltage is they'll both deliver current to the setup simultaneously. If one has higher voltage than the other, the one with higher voltage supplies the current. But in my case, they're both set to the same output voltage, so they'll both supply current. For software, again, we can see what firmware is available. We got 1.03 available, 1.0 is beta, and it looks like I've got the current link. So that's it, not a whole lot on the BEC, but it's there as an option to configure it as well. Hey, I just want you to know before you go, full 66% of viewers on RC Video Reviews are not subscribers. That number's been going down, which is great, so I wanna thank all of you that used to be viewers but are now subscribers. Thanks for joining the channel. For the other 66% of you, come on, hit the button. You gotta, you gotta join because that's the kind of thing that encourages YouTube people to make YouTube videos. You gotta see our channels grow. We have to see our subscriber base grow. It's important for you to join the channel. For the rest of you, you know what to do. Make sure you keep commenting on the video. Leave a like, a thumbs up if you can. Don't forget to hit up my Amazon affiliate links for consumable RC gear and check out my t-shirt store. That's all I've got for today, guys. Take it easy. There are a couple of different ways to get into the ESC calip. Beep, 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 beep. And then the connectivity is a micro USB and the connectivity is a mini USB in the and the blah, blah, blah. in addition to the USB programmer you'll also need to download the castle link software I've already done that but I'm going to show you how to get it I all I did was type in <laughs> Windows I love Windows to configure your ES beep 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 the first one under throttle and there are first option under throttle before we get into the options I want to that gives a little more Turk Turk while we download the data here are the options while we don't beep beep beep